Well, good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started, and there might be a few others that will still make their way in, but let's open up in a word of prayer, and then uh, we're just going to listen to a song being played uh, this evening, although we cannot sing until next Wednesday. Uh, we'll be spending uh, some time really worshiping the Lord next Wednesday, uh, but we'll listen to a song, and then we'll go right into the study, and then have time for prayer. Uh, Brother Dale, would you open us up in prayer this evening? Good morning. It's just, uh, now there, there's no singing on this one, so it's just the words and the music, but uh, just follow along and, and uh, read the words as we listen to the song, How Excellent Is Your Name. Excellent uh, song. I think it dates back still to about the uh, 80s or 90s, so it is an older song. But uh, just a great, great little song. Well, I want to again welcome everyone to, to our prayer meeting tonight and even those that are watching uh, via our live stream this evening. Um, let's take our Bibles and uh, turn to First Chronicles, if you would. Again, this evening, as we go back to our text from last week, First Chronicles chapter 4. As we're studying the Jabez prayer, again, uh, hopefully going to 
be able to experience this prayer as we did the Lord's Prayer and learning how to pray more effectively as we look at this particular prayer in the scriptures. And as we uh, do this evening, uh, or as we have done in uh, previous evenings, uh, let's uh, again uh, read the prayer out loud together. I think, uh, can everybody see that on the screen? It's a little bit smaller font. But uh, if you can read that out with me, let's begin with that tonight as we read our text. Beginning at verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him his request. As we uh, began to look at this uh, last week, we spent a, a, a bit of time looking at some various questions about the prayer of Jabez. Um, and looking at some statistics on how people uh, feel about this particular prayer. As you know, we mentioned last week, it's a, it was a prayer that was um, really identified in a little book that uh, Bruce Wilkinson did uh, back a number of years ago called The Prayer of Jabez. And after he did that, it seemed to hit the Christian circuit, if I could use that terminology, and uh, in, a, in a proper way where people began to look at it and, and uh, consider what was being said. But as with everything, there are people that uh, take some things and swing the pendulum, and they can swing the pendulum in a bad direction. And so uh, the prayer of Jabez is often looked at as a prayer of, uh, especially in the charismatic movement, of a prayer of prosperity. So it, it fit real uh, in line with the prosperity gospel. And uh, so because of that, uh, the prayer of Jabez was kind of put on the shelf by uh, most uh, conservative evangelicals uh, because of what the charismatic movement did in using the prayer of Jabez uh, more as a prosperity gospel type of prayer. And we looked at some of the statistics last week concerning that prayer and, and recognized that the prayer really isn't what has it's been made out to be by being a uh, prayer of uh, prosperity, but it is actually a prayer that it goes in a different direction, and I think we're going to learn that as we learn a little bit more about the prayer of Jabez. So we focus on the who and the and the what, and this evening we're going to look, or the, the who and the what, and yes, and this evening we're going to look at the why. So we started off with the prayer of Jabez, um, talking about, and I'm just going to fast pace a few of these slides from last week, we looked at the person, talked about his name, you know, talked about the fact that his, his name meant pain, and a number of things concerning his character. And this evening, as we uh, look at uh, his uh, Jabez tonight, we're going to be looking at the second part, which is uh, what the prayer is. And uh, that is uh, the motivation behind the prayer, or the what. Um, and so we're going to be focusing on, the, on this part of the prayer as Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. And as we look at this tonight, we want to discover the what of the prayer in recognizing that there are four parts. Now, the four parts that we're going to be looking at, we're going to look at in detail, uh, over the next couple of weeks because we want to really look into what does the scripture say about the particular parts of this prayer and what does it mean to us if it's going to help us learn to pray more effectively. So the first part is, Oh, that thou would bless me. Now as we look at that tonight, what do you think he was asking when he said, Oh, that thou would bless me? What comes to your mind as an individual? when you read the prayer and then think about what he said, oh, that thou would bless me. What do you think he meant by that? I think he meant that God be with him whatever he endeavored to do. Okay, that God would be with him whatever he endeavored to do. Any other thoughts in, in what he meant? 
while he was praying that. Now we were gonna, we are gonna go in depth in these phrases, so uh, and and really begin to discover from the scripture what it means. But uh, just be thinking about the terms that are used within this prayer. The second one was enlarge my coast, uh, and this was the one that's probably sounded more. Um, selfish than, than the rest of the prayer by some people. Enlarge my coast. What do you think he meant by that? Any His ideas? Influence. Sorry? His area of influence. His area of influence. Yeah. Yeah. Going to say exactly the same thing. yeah. His area of influence. Great minds think alike. Yeah. I won't finish the rest of that. Because <laughs> that's what my mom used to always say to us. So, uh, yeah, enlarge my coast. So we're going to look again at that a little bit more um, in the next few weeks. But as we look at that, we understand that this part of the prayer is uh, him asking God to help him um, as he, in a sense, staked out the, process, the, the influence that he would have or the ability, as we will see in the context of what he was doing at the time, and again, gaining the area of Canaan back for the Israelites, right? So let's also look at the next part, which is, let your hand be with me. That, that sounds fairly obviously. He's asking God for what? Protection. Right. Protection, guidance, help. And we'll look at it again, a few things concerning uh, what, the, what does that really mean and how can we apply that to our prayers. And the fourth part of that prayer is protect me um, uh, or keep me from evil. And, and that sounds a little bit even uh, in regards to the Lord's Prayer, right? That we, we just learned over the last number of weeks. And so I want you to be thinking about these parts of the prayer as we begin to go through them in the next uh, uh, few weeks together. But let's just analyze this a little bit this evening, just sort of as an introduction. Uh, and I want you to take a look at, first of all, what the prayer is. Um, as we look at the prayer of Jabez, the prayer at its most basic level is really a plea to Almighty God to move or to do something on behalf of Jabez. It is a recognition that without the hand of God in Jabez's life, he would have a mighty tough time to accomplish what he believed God wanted him to do. So as we consider this prayer, it is a prayer of asking God for help. It is a cry, in a sense, to the only one who could make the mountains move, who could go before Israel, who could bring the blessing of, that was promised to the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it would to be able to bring all of that covenant uh, to the people once again and see it fulfilled. It is a prayer to acknowledge, in a sense, also the helplessness of Jabez in the face of the task that he is facing. It is a prayer that is admitting, in a sense, to God that his need is for God to do the work, that he couldn't accomplish what he knew God wanted to do on his own, that he needed God's help. Well, it sure sounds like a prayer we could apply to our hearts and our lives today when we need God's help to do what God's called us to do. And so it's a request for God to intervene so that he could accomplish the work that God has called him to do. But it's not just what the prayer is, it's what the prayer is not. If you are like me, you probably were a bit skeptical as we began this prayer last week as many are when they begin to look at this prayer, as uh, again, because of with the way it has been used in the past, uh, and the way people have looked at this prayer and turned it into almost a prosperity prayer, it is something that we need to recognize that it is not. I remember the first time I heard it a number of years ago, that I myself felt that how could someone pray this prayer? It sounds like the prayer that comes from the preachers that are on TV. You know, those prosperity preachers that you hear so often of. So how could we pray this prayer and how could this prayer help us in our prayer? I read an illustration that went like this that kind of helped. It went, uh, there was an interim pastor uh, in Bristol, uh, in England. Uh, but uh, was still uh, working full-time 
back at what they called the central business supply. There was a certain godly gentleman, the story goes on to say, who would come and visit him at his desk when he was in the area, and they would talk and pray together. One day, as he was walking him to the door, he put his hand on the other fellow's shoulder and told him that he was praying the prayer of Jabez for him, and then he quoted it. He didn't quite understand the prayer, and he took it as a nice intention of the godly old man who loved him and wanted him to prosper. He appreciated it, but he decided that he didn't need that type of prayer in his life. His first impression is, the old, is one many have, and that it is just another proof text of health, wealth, and prosperity. The name, uh, this, and then he went on to say, it's the name it and claim it crowd that he thought of, who feel that they can make demands of God for blessings. So as we look at uh, this prayer over the next couple of weeks, I, I, I really hope that we'll understand that this is not what it's all about. Uh, as I've said earlier, it's a plea to the Lord in a sense to intervene so that he could accomplish his purposes. It is also not a, what some have referred to as a, a mantra. You know what I mean when I say a mantra type prayer? A prayer that is just uh, words that are repetitious and, it, and uh, it, they're just said in more of, uh, uh, not in any depth of what the words mean, but just r words that are randomly put back to back um, and, and prayed in that way. And it is, it's, it, it, no, it's not that type of prayer either, uh, because it's, it's like the prayer as in a sense that the Lord taught his disciples as we've already looked at, a prayer that ought to help us as Christians understand God. And in understanding God and prayer, we can pray more effectively. And so I'm hoping that as we go through this, we might be able to, again, uh, receive some truth from the Word of God that will help us be able to be greater prayer warriors. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13, if you have your Bibles with you, um, can someone take and read that passage aloud for us? 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13. Let's consider what that verse says this evening. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Okay, so what it, it's speaking about the Word of God, that these things are written that we might know we have eternal life. And I put that verse into the body of this study tonight because I also believe that when we read this prayer, and, and especially as we see the end of it, it states that it, God answered this prayer, didn't he? And so there must be a benefit for us to learn this prayer. And so just as the words of God bring life to us, the word of God can also bring strength and hope as we pray to the God of this word. The key here is to trust in God as we pray a prayer like this, or any prayer, to trust in God who is able. And if we were to sort of give the prayer of Jabez a subtitle, that's probably what it would be. Trust in God who is able. And I think that's because as we look at this, uh, we can see that this prayer that he is praying is something that's very, very important. But there was a motivation behind uh, why Jabez, I think, prayed this prayer and why I think it's important for us to learn about it. And that purpose is a, uh, a few things tonight. Is First of all, Jabez's purpose for praying this prayer, as we covered uh, this a bit in detail last week, but let me just summarize it by saying that the purpose was to invite God to do a mighty work as Jabez sought to conquer the land of promised 
by God to the Israelites, recognizing his need for the hand of God in his life. So that's the real sense or essence of this prayer, that God would do a work in and through him. And that's why I think it fits uh, and sort of hits home with me as a pastor and as a preacher, because that's my desire. My desire is that God would do a work in and through me for his honor and glory <laughs> and for his purpose. And, and that's the real reason why Jabez was praying this prayer. It wasn't a selfish prayer, as we'll learn, that he was praying for himself. He was praying this prayer for who? For everyone, for the people of Israel. And, and just as if we were to take and, and pray similarly, as we will learn the parts of this prayer, it's not that we're praying for ourselves, but we're praying that God would use ourselves as we humble ourselves to him in a greater way amongst our family, our friends, and our community. And so there was Jabez's purpose, but there's also our purpose. Uh, again, it is a conscious in, in, uh, invitation to God to work. It's a, con a conscious invitation in asking God that, and, and, and basically confessing that without him, we don't stand a chance. We don't stand a chance to accomplish much without God. And so even as we think about the future, uh, as we look down the line of, of what can we do as a church within our community and affecting our community for the gospel of Jesus Christ, even if we were to pray this type of prayer or at least acknowledge this as part of our thinking when we do go to prayer, it's important for us to recognize that without God, we can't do anything. But with God, all things are what? Possible. And that's, I think, the real key to this prayer is that when we pray, we pray to the same God that Jabez was praying to. We pray to the same God that Jabez brought this request before God, and at the end of this request, what does it say? God, what? Granted him his request. And so we can go to God believing that when we do pray a prayer like this, and we are looking at the greater needs of others and not ourselves, that God will hear our prayer, and God will work in us and through us for that purpose. So, just as a conclusion this evening, as we kind of wrap up the intro of the prayer of Jabez, we want to make sure that we look at uh, a few things. First of all, the reason God answered the prayer of Jabez is because Jabez was what? The scripture says he was a noble person, or he was a person who uh, was living more uh, righteously in the sense that he was, he was in trying to walk his best with God. And walking his best with God showed others that he was very noble and even more honorable, according to the scriptures, than his brother. The second thing is the prayer of Jabez is not a prayer again of what? Greed. But rather a prayer of trust in God who is able to make anything happen for his glory. And as we pray this type of prayer, it's important to know these things from the beginning, especially even as we look at each phrase and study it even more. But thirdly, we want to recognize that when we pray this prayer again, we pray to who? The same God. The God who not only answered this prayer, but the same God who, in our Sunday school hour, answered the prayer of the three Hebrew children, answered the prayer of Daniel. And you can go on and on and on that we are praying to the same God that many throughout the scriptures uh, prayed to and saw their prayers answered. So this same God wants us, in a sense, to make us a, a noble people for himself who trust God to move for his purposes in and through us. So let's begin to think about how we can lift up this prayer to God. And 
take time to look at it even through the week as we begin to process the various phrases like we did in the last uh, number of weeks for the Lord's Prayer. Um, I want you to listen to this song. It's called The Prayer of Jabez. And it might be a good one that we can even learn to sing as we come out of, out of uh, orange and into yellow. So maybe we'll sing it with the video uh, next week. But this, this is a great song that is taken from this text. And it's not going to play. That's okay. I'll, I'll get it working for next week. Oh my goodness. So, well, maybe that's just to say we'll sing it together uh, next week. But it, a great song that just to teach us what this prayer is all about. Well, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer, and then uh, for those that are watching live stream, we're going to gather in our time uh, together in our groups for prayer, and we want to encourage those that are watching at home to also spend time in prayer. But let's close in prayer here tonight. Father in heaven, Lord, we're so thankful for uh, this evening that we can gather in your house, and we just pray, God, that, Lord, as, even as we begin to go into this prayer, as we did the Lord's Prayer, God, help our hearts to be open to the words that we're going to be looking at. Help our hearts to be open to the principles that are taught and, and focused on uh, as we look at these phrases. And I pray, O oh God, that you will just help us as a people of God. That when we gather together on Wednesday nights, as we go before the throne of grace, I pray that we would indeed pray more effectively. And I pray, God, that you would do a work as we will learn even through the prayer of Jabez in and through us for your honor and your glory. We need you, God. We need your help. We need you to hear and answer this prayer in our lives when we submit ourselves to you and pray, O oh God, that you will do wondrous things through us in the days to come. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Stop this here.